I know what you're thinking. How accurate am I seeing the colors on Ben's tie-dye t-shirt? Well, don't worry, because we're about to find out. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate your computer screen. Roll the intro. Sorry if anybody got excited, I just can't bring myself to wear a tie-dye throughout the entire video. So moving on, a bit of housekeeping. This entire video is shot with a custom white balance. So this is a grey card, you use this for getting a correct exposure for photography or video. And if you flip it over, you've got a white card. I've taken a photograph of this and I've set my camera to a custom white balance. Therefore, in these lighting conditions, this is perfectly white. And to keep things consistent, I've got an LED studio light on that side of the room, which is color balance, which is 5,600 Kelvin. And I've got another LED panel over there, which is once again, 5,600 Kelvin. So as you watch this video, this should be perfectly white. If it's not, then we're gonna fix that. To add to that, I've also got, this is essentially the replacement for my tie-dye t-shirt. This is a color checker chart. So this is what you might take a photograph of if you're trying to perfect the colors in your video and photograph as well. Now this video was instigated when Data Color got in touch with me and they said, Ben, how would you like to review the Spider X Pro? I said, yeah, great, because I was still rocking the Spider 3 Pro, which is pretty damn old now, and it's not actually supported by newer versions of Windows. So I said, yes, and here we are making a video about it. If you were to summarize what this does, you plug this into your computer, you run some software and it will calibrate your computer screen. When I say calibrate, what that means is everything that should be black after calibrating it will be black. Everything that should be white will be white and all the colors in between will be accurate. Data Color have a tagline. It's confidence, control and consistency. Now I don't think this is going to give you confidence in every aspect of your life, but it definitely will help your photography. I think it was probably seven or eight years ago when I first calibrated my screen. This will probably be familiar to you. You'll edit a photograph and you'll spend ages doing it. I tend to walk away, come back to it. I finished editing this photograph and I was happy with it. I posted it online and somebody writes a comment, dude, photograph's too bright. Or Ben, your photograph is way too dark. What's going on here? Now, when you're looking at your photographs or your video on a computer screen, on your computer screen, it might look correct. If you've got a phone or if you've got a tablet, then you can check to see how consistent it is on different devices. And what you'll probably find is that it looks slightly different on each of the screens. So what this is going to do is remove some of the variables. So once you have calibrated your computer screen and you post an image online, if somebody says, oh, I think the colors are off, you can confidently go back to them and say, I've calibrated my monitor. That is exactly how I wanted the colors to be. It's exactly the same for when you're printing photographs. I've received so many prints that I've been unhappy with and it was my fault. I've sent images off which I thought were correctly exposed and the colors were correct, but it turns out no. But if you calibrated your screen, you can go back to the printing company and say, I don't think your prints are quite right. The colors are off. It's a bit dark. It's a bit bright, etc. Can you do it again, please? So in camera, there are quite a few things that you need to make sure that you're doing correctly so that you're starting in a good position. In terms of the things that could influence your exposure and your color in camera, you've obviously got the brightness of the screen or the viewfinder, you can change that. So you want to make sure that you know what you're working with. You've got white balance, but if you're shooting in raw, then that's not going to be so much of an issue. You've got perhaps color cast from filters if you're using a polarizer or a 10 stop ND filter, most of them have a color cast that you'll have to correct afterwards. You've also got color profiles on most computers and if you like to edit in the evening, some devices will automatically set themselves to night mode, which warms things up so that you can sleep better at night. You obviously want to disable that if you're trying to get accurate results whilst editing at nighttime. Physical prints aside, sticking to the digital realm, what you want to make sure is what you see on your computer screen is accurate. Once you send it out into the world, if different people see different things on their own devices, that's their problem. But at least you want the comfort in knowing that what you're putting out there is accurate and correct, exactly as you wanted it to be. Of course, different social media platforms, they're all going to compress your images. These lovely images back here, once you put them on Facebook and Instagram, they're 
they, they are compressed massively. So I lose half of the tones in the photographs when I post them online. But if people want to see the higher quality version, go and look at it on my website, get a print. I know that the image that I put up there in the first place was good. If social media starts to eke away at the quality of your images, there's nothing we can do about that. But at least you'll have the comfort in knowing that what you put out there was correct. But our audience are none the wiser and they're looking at our images probably slightly warmer, slightly brighter, slightly darker. There's nothing we can do about that. Having said that though, some devices are better calibrated straight out of the box. iPhones and iPads seem to be quite well calibrated. It's a good job because you can't actually calibrate them. This calibration device here is for computers. It, it plugs in via USB, you have to install some software. You can't calibrate an iPad, you can't calibrate an iPhone, um, you can't calibrate most tablets with it. This is for a computer monitor. And to celebrate this arriving in the post, I've got a brand new computer screen. It's never been out of the box, never been calibrated. So from beginning to end, I'm going to show you how I calibrate that screen. Inside the box you can see a piece of paper with a link. Go to this link and download the software. Once you open up the software you're going to be confronted with a few simple questions. First of all it wants to know that you've left your screen on for a while just so that it can warm up. Second one it wants to know that you've not got any direct light shining onto your screen and also because this is a new screen all of the settings are default but most screens also let you change the brightness and color settings so this question is just make sure that you've reset everything and finally make sure that your spider is plugged into the usb port on the computer and not a hub i'm going to go ahead and click next the spider will let you calibrate both laptops and desktop screens today i'm doing a desktop screen this particular screen is made by dell so i'm just going to hit next this question is about whether or not my screen lets me change the brightness and the color temperature. I just leave the brightness box ticked. This is a relatively cheap computer screen, so it just has a standard LED. But if you buy a more expensive, more sophisticated screen, you may need to use the wide LED settings. I need to run a full calibration because this is a brand new screen. But as you can see here, it does recognize that I last calibrated a monitor on this computer in March of this year but that was a previous screen, so that's not this screen. I'm going to go ahead and click next. The next step is to take an ambient meter reading of the room. Quite simply, that's going to measure the brightness of the lights in your room, not the screen. Position the device flat on your desk with the writing facing upwards. Okay, I was getting a few readings suggesting that the ambient light in here was high or very high. I've still got the device in the middle of the desk and quite simply I've switched off this light that I had on in the background. It wasn't directly illuminating my desk or my workspace, it was bouncing off the wall, but it was considering that to be too high. Now the result I'm getting, it says that the room light is medium. Click next and this window will pop up essentially saying don't walk away because you will be asked to change the settings on your computer screen halfway through the calibration. Now we need to position the spider on the screen as shown. Spider itself, you can open it up. This moves up and down, that's quite simply a counterweight. That's the glass lens that goes up against your computer screen and this is taking all the meter readings. So you're just using the counterweight on the back of the screen sling it over the top of the monitor and then you position it there like that. Click next and then the calibration will start and you're going to get a disco on your computer screen. Now that it's taken a few meter readings it wants to define the black and the white points and as you can see here it's saying that my computer screen is set too bright. Every computer screen is going to be different so I can't talk you through that process but you need to turn the brightness of your screen down so that the results come within the green bar on the diagram then hit refresh. Click continue and it will finish the calibration process doing all of the whites, blacks and all of the colors in between. This part will take a few minutes. Now you can go ahead and remove the spider, hit finish and it will ask you to save this profile. Because I calibrate my screen every couple of months, I normally call it uh, Ben's Dell spring 2020 or something similar 
Click next and the final screen is a comparison before and after calibration. You can see here I'm switching between uncalibrated and calibrated. Some screens are better calibrated straight out of the box. This Dell is a particularly good one. The brightness seems to have been pretty good, but the uncalibrated version, the colors were a bit cooler, whereas the calibrated seems to be a bit warmer. So that was nice and easy, but as you can see, I've got more than one screen connected to my machine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I calibrated multiple screens connected to the same computer. But I clicked on a button where it said, would you like to calibrate another monitor? So I hit yes. If you've got a multiple screen setup, if you go right click on your desktop, go to display settings, and then you click identify, then you can see monitor on the left is one and three. And then the large 4K monitor is number two, which is to the right of the camera. And if you can see the screen on the left of the frame, when I click calibrate and uncalibrate, it's not affecting the screen to the left at all. It's just doing this one screen. We're all learning something here today. I've never done all three screens at the same time. So this is not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. And finally, to finish off this experiment, I've calibrated my third monitor, which is my 4K screen. But whilst I've got this screen up, I think it's worth noting that the higher resolution the screen the smaller this box is and you can't increase the size of it so you see where it says place the spider here the spider's bigger than that so there you go i'm done i've got three screens that have all been calibrated and are working together i can confidently edit photos and videos on these screens now if you're curious about why i've got so many computer screens connected to my machine i've made a video about that i'll put the card up here in terms of ongoing maintenance, every time you turn your computer on, for a few seconds you're going to see the uncalibrated version of your screen. Then the software will load, and then you'll see the correct calibrated version of your screen. And every couple of months, depending on what you set it to, it might be 3, 6 or 12 months, it will remind you, by the way, you should recalibrate your screen. Also, you have calibrated your screen to specific lighting conditions. I edit my photographs in the morning and at night, so before work and after work. In the summer, the lighting conditions are different to the winter, so you might be better off calibrating it every, say, three months for the most accurate results. Now, initially, I was struggling to calibrate these three different screens that I've got connected to the same machine, because when you calibrate one of them, essentially that, the computer is sending out the same signal three times but I've got one old screen there, one new screen there. They are both 1080. And then I've got a 4K monitor over here, which is the newest. Now they're all different technology. When I contacted Datacolor, I said, how should I approach calibrating three different monitors connected to the same computer? And what they said was, you should have the same lighting conditions for all three, and you should set them all to the same target brightness value. I also had some issues when I was taking a meter reading for the room and it said my workstation was too bright. Quite simply, I had to take the device away from the computer screen because the computer screen itself was giving off too much light. Now, if you're curious about if you buy one of these, how many computer screens can you calibrate? As many as you want, as long as they belong to you. The license holder can calibrate as many of their computer screens as they like. That's the rules. I know calibrating a computer screen is not a sexy subject, but it's just one of those things that you have to do. If you want to be taken seriously, if you want to take photography seriously, then you have to be working on an accurate screen. I was editing some wedding photographs once and all of the photographs looked overexposed, particularly on the bride's dress. So I was taking the exposure down and essentially when everybody else was looking at the photographs, it was light gray instead of white. That's not a good thing. I very quickly calibrated my monitor after that. Calibrating your monitor is an absolute must. If you're sending your images out onto social media, for print, for publishing, whatever it is, if you want consistent, what is it? If you want confidence, control, and consistency, then you need to calibrate your monitor. Thank you for watching. If you're thinking of picking one up, I'll put a link in the description below, but that's not an affiliate link. I don't get a penny for it, uh, but I do highly recommend it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.